Howdy and welcome to Schlitterbahn in New Braunfels, Texas. The world's most award-winning and iconic water park. We have got a lot to cover today, so let's dive right in. So when you buy an admission ticket to Schlitterbahn, New Braunfels, you basically get two entire parks. So this tram takes you back and forth between the parks. It's about eight-tenths of a mile to get from one to the other, so you're not going to want to walk. We're going to start here at the east side. This is the new side. This is more like a traditional water park. The west side is really special. It's the older side and they have unique rides over there, but most of the marquee attractions are here on the newer east side. The east side is further divided into three subsections called Blastenhof, Tubenbach, and Surfenberg. We'll begin the tour in the Blastenhof section and we're greeted by this iconic slide tower complex. This is the master blaster at the top. This is the Coney Island Cyclone of Water Coasters. It's the third ever one built. It is longer and faster than the original one on the other side of the park. Several golden ticket awards. You probably see this slide, this water coaster and the slide complex all over the Travel Channel. Of course we see the German inspired castle theming here on this complex and throughout the park. That is of course due to all the German immigrants in this area. Also on this complex we have the Wolf Pack. This is, a, this is the yellow slide here. This is a family raft slide. And we have the Black Knight. These are one or two person tube slides. I believe that they make all of their own stuff here. They uh, get their own contractors and design and build all their own slides. If that's not true, just uh, scroll down to the comments and I'm sure some angry water park fanatic will correct me on that one. But what they've done here is very, very impressive. This is sort of the cedar point of water parks. They've pioneered and designed and invented many different water slide concepts. We'll go into a little bit more depth on the attractions on this slide complex, starting with the Master Blaster. The Master Blaster is the most popular attraction at the park, so I recommend arriving right at park opening time to steal a few rides before the masses arrive for the day. There are a few light moments of air time to be enjoyed on the ride, but a few rough spots as well. The finishing helix sequence is strong for a water-based ride. Overall, I enjoy Master Blaster, but I don't find it to be the ultimate water coaster. Wolfpack rides very much like most family style raft rides. Depending on where you sit, you can travel forward, backward, or sideways. Sometimes you will rush up one of the sides of the chute, which can be a very thrilling moment. The Black Knight slides are similar to enclosed slides that you see at other water parks. The slides are very nearly pitch dark, which adds intensity to the experience. I recommend riding in a two-person tube with a friend to increase speed versus riding alone. The Torrent River and Beach encircles the main water slide complex. This is something of a lazy river, although there are pretty significant waves in here. It combines sort of a lazy river with a wave pool concept. Pond's Hideout is a pirate-themed water playground area. There's some slides on the back side of it. There's several other water playground areas at this park too in different areas spread out. So here's your locker prices for 2019. A little bit steep, but that's to be somewhat expected at an award-winning water park like this. The small lockers are pretty small. Of course, you $25 will get you this very large locker. There's also a sky coaster in the Blast and Hop section. It's a pretty big one. Prices are a little bit high compared to some other amusement parks. That's all right, not too many of these in the area. And the tube in box section is the falls. This is billed as the world's longest water ride. It's said to take 30 minutes to go all the way around this circuit, although I clocked it at 22 minutes myself. I might be booking a little bit faster than the average person, I guess. So this isn't simply a lazy river. You see there's some rapids over here. There's another set of rapids on the other side. This is a very large uh, circuit 
So it does take quite a while to go around and then there's this conveyor that takes you from the lower elevation to the higher elevation. Here's another view of the falls looking back over the iconic slide complex. And to our left is the Komal River. This is not part of the park, although you do see people tubing down the river here. This is what sparked the uh, engine that created the Schlitterbahn universe. It's people were already tubing down this river. It's a pretty interesting, unique experience. You can actually bring alcohol and float down this river, and it's really cheap. I did it the other day, and the admission to it is only $2 to get in. But definitely uh, hit this up if you can while you're in New Braunfels. Here's a map to help you see the layout of the falls, where it lies in uh, comparison to the river, and the Blastenhof section. The Deluge is another tubing experience lazy river kind of hybrid. This actually connects to the falls so you can ride both of these together as one ride. Also nearby the falls is the river bend pool and the river bend heated pool. Just uh, areas to relax. There's a heated pool, the regular pool. It's the children's play area. The Sea Creature Cove offers some more children's play places. There's a big dragon. And the elephant. This is a good place to get on the falls you can get on over here because then you definitely know where you got on and you can get off at the same spot very easily. Just look at the dragon and you'll know. Surfenberg section. The Boogie Bond is the anchor attraction of this section and this is the original flow rider. They give you a boogie board here, you dive on in at an angle and then you can try to surf on this uh, artificial wave. This isn't the easiest one to learn on. It, uh, it, like I said, this is the original one. Uh, they invented this with uh, help from an outside company. Uh, these are the wave lock flow riders is the concept here. There's a flat section in the middle which makes it a little bit hard. She's up on her knees. If I can, I'll try to get some footage of someone who's really good at it. I'm just kind of good at it. But this is a really fun attraction to try to learn and uh, get better at it and try new tricks. And it has one of the longest lines in the parks as well. I've been here a while. I haven't seen anyone that's really great. Let's see what this guy's got. There's definitely YouTube videos of people that are really good at this that can do sorts of spins and barrel rolls and cool stuff. But there you go. He's trying to board throw. Didn't quite pull it in. So on the artificial surface of the boogie vaughn, there's a uh, body slide of some sort. So I'm not sure you call it a, a slide. You can just slip down the, the surface here. It looks like that water's going pretty quick there. Nestled in the corner of the park is Dragon's Revenge. Schlitterbahn invented the water coaster and this is the original. Not only is it the first water coaster, it's also the best themed one. Riders pick up their tubes at the bottom of the hill and walk up to this castle. The music and sets of this area create excitement and anticipation, adding much to the ride experience. This level of theming is not to be found on any other water coaster I've seen. The ride is not fast for a water coaster, but the length of the ride is satisfactory. The highlight of the ride is a long tunnel in which you encounter a projection of the dragon. Definitely the highlight of my Schlitterbahn visit. <laughs> One has the choice of riding this alone or with a partner. When riding double, it feels like the tube has difficulty climbing each hill, so I suggest riding alone for a faster experience. Overall, Dragon's Revenge is my favorite water coaster given the impressive projection sequence and detailed theming. This is one of the biggest reasons to book a Schlitterbahn visit. Adjacent to the Dragon's Revenge water coaster is the Kitty Coast. Got a uh, little play area for the tots, and there's a water 
I'm, I'm sorry, a lazy river that goes all the way around this area. So this is just your typical lazy river that you see at other water parks. It's nice that they have this one because all of their other tubing rides are not sort of the lazy in the traditional sense. We've now moved over to Schlitterbahn West. This is the original Schlitterbahn Park. Many of my friends here have stated that this is actually their more favorite of the two sections. Let's go on in and see why. We'll start with the downhill racer mat slides, a four lane mat racer that goes over the entrance. This one is not particularly tall, even shorter than the office shelf model that we see at so many of the other parks. That's okay, it's a little bit different. So 2019 is the 40th anniversary of the original Slitterbahn Park. What makes this part of the park so special is rides like this. This is Hillside, set behind a German castle. You can see that this is a lazy river type of ride, but there's considerably more turbulent waters. A little bit of a thrill, and then the, the scenery is very beautiful too. There's some well-maintained gardens. There are many tube rides like this at Schlitterbahn that really have no equivalent at any other water park. Looking up at the hillside tube shoe ride, we now see the soda straws. These are short body slides. They're pretty zippy for body slides, although they're not very long. And then we have this beautiful pool complex. See the volleyball courts, you can hang out. And there's the Legend Special. There is the swim up bar. Or as one of my friends once said, the dive bar. He said, if you swim up to it, then it must be a dive bar, right? No, it's the swim up bar. And one of the uh, tubing rides exits in here. I believe that that is the end of the hillside tube tube. This is the map of the original West Schlitterbahn Park. There's the entrance where we started at. Hillside attraction, soda straws. That's the river at the top. There's the large downhill slope from the entrance down to the river. There's the tube slides and the wave pool. Here's the fun little German inspired children's play area. The Bonsai pipelines are a set of tube slides. These are some of the fastest and craziest you'll see anywhere. This was the surprise hit of the day for me. The wave pool is simply titled the Beach Wave Pool, and it's not very big or very deep. Kind of surprising considering the accolades all this park has received, but people are clearly not here for the wave pool. The Tad Pool Kitty Pool is located close to the wave pool. Also in this area, there is a small arcade behind a castle-like facade, some private cabana-like areas. There's this adult pool with yet another swim-up bar. Over here is the Lava Lagoon, right there and the Congo River Expedition. This looks like fun, unfortunately it's not open. The guide says float the mysterious river. See, live animal, I'm not sure what that means. Maybe some other time. Just in case you're wondering what the food prices are like, here's the, the pizza parlor stand. Really not too bad, they will allow you to bring whatever food or drinks you want in with the exception of alcohol and glass bottles. Der Bun is a set of speed slides. You can race your friends down this incline. It's a little steeper at the top than the bottom. This isn't a particularly long ride, no twists or anything, but you can rack up some pretty good speed going down this hill. Double Loop is a set of twisting body slides. The texture is different than other body slides. The surface is a lot grainier, but there's no noticeable seams. You feel a lot of bumps, but there's no back scraping. Overall, these slides are above average. Now, let's talk about Schlitterbahn's tube shoot rides. These are some of the most unique and popular attractions in the park. Most water slides require a long walk up several flights of stairs and last for only a few seconds. But Schlitterbahn's tubing runs are long rides, allowing guests to splash in the rapids for several minutes. The Raging River is the longest tube shoot at the East Side Park 
taking guests from one corner of the park to the opposite side. One tunnel goes underneath some of the buildings and attractions. At one point the pathway splits and guests can choose to merge onto either the cliffhanger chute and end the ride on a large drop or can continue down the chute which spits out into the Comal River. The final drop down into the river was closed on my visit but that may have been due to it being early in the season. Whitewater is the most intense of the tube chute rides and thus is my favorite. A constant barrage of dips, dives, and turns sets this one apart from the others. Whitewater ends near the entrance to Cliffhanger, so riding the two in sequence is convenient. Cliffhanger is a short ride compared with some of the others, but its strength is a large drop at the end. Several of the dips in the slides have strong back currents which keeps many tubers stuck in place. This does happen on other runs, but this one causes the most chaos. If you do get stuck, try to push yourself back into the downhill current. Hillside is the oldest of the tube chutes, but it's one of the best. The pacing steadily increases throughout the slide as it starts with a lazy stroll around the gardens. It then cuts through the park's main building and ends with several exciting drops. The last of which ends in a large activity pool. Yeah, this is one of my favorite Slitterbond pastimes right here. When you're going up over this section, all these people are standing in line here. So when you're going down this portion, if you can recognize it, you can just shovel all this water over this edge and just drench these people. One time I heard people screaming because I got them so wet. Fun times. So about a week after this visit, we all learned Cedar Fair had acquired this park and the Galveston Schlitterbahn. Will this park lose its charm and some of the more daring attractions when corporatism rules the day? It may, but my guess is it won't happen overnight. One example is this. When have you seen anything like this at a Cedar Fair water park? It's plausible Cedar Fair could limit the amount of riders being sent down the chute and capacity would decrease substantially. Hyde also suggested that the final tube chute that drops into the Comal River could be on the chopping block. On the positive side, I am hopeful Cedar Fair will notice holes in the current slide lineup. The park doesn't have any modern tube or body slides. Examples are drop slides, bowl and funnel slides, and looping slides. An upgraded wave pool would also be a welcome addition. No one knows how Cedar Fair will shape the future of this park, but my advice is to visit as soon as you can. In closing, it's easy to see why Schlitterbahn has won the Golden Ticket Award all 21 years of the award's history for Best Water Park. The total number of tube chutes, water slides, activities, and attractions is overwhelming. The deep collection of tube chute rides is so unique, they must simply be experienced. A full day may not be long enough to experience all of the major slides and attractions. Schlitterbahn is simply a five-star park that every amusement park fan and water park fan must plan to come visit. Thank you for watching this review of Schlitterbahn New Braunfels. I have several more Texas water park reviews to be released this month, so smash the subscribe button to stay up to date. This is Ranger, Dallas, Texas-based correspondent for In The Loop, signing off.